Hello everyone, welcome back. It's Space Engineers Plus Me, episode 37. I'm an Eggman, and today, you see it before you. Proof of concept, the gondola works. Mostly, it's taken a long time to get here. It's taken many, many different uh, tests and trials and failures to arrive at this point where we have a ship that basically moves back and forth along a track all by itself. You just start it and it goes. That will be the basis for our next mining platform attached to the Atlas that we've been working on. It's, it's got to push the limits. We, I mean, we, we, we've done the dangling from a chain of pistons thing and it, it kind of works, but it also kind of blew up when we weren't watching it. So <laughs> try something else, but also try and push the limits of what we know and understand about the game mechanics and this is a great opportunity to do that so you can see we've got a number of different pieces and, and components working together to make this happen I'm going to take a look at them in detail live for your viewing pleasure uh, but when I say that it mostly works it's very important to understand that it's it's still got some tweaking that we need to do uh, in order to make it work reliably and for longer than a few minutes at a time. So this is what it looks like when it's not moving. It's just kind of sitting up there. The track is swaying ever so slightly up and down. Kind of... <laughs> it makes me nervous. We've got a... I don't know if you noticed this. We've got a spotlight up there. That doesn't work because there's no power on the track. It's just <laughs> blocks. No power. So, uh, this is the skeleton of the original version. Uh, what happened was we were testing it and it broke the blocks that were containing it and keeping it from falling off the track as it went by. It was supposed to reverse direction, but it just broke them and kept going. And I thought, I'm going to save my ship. So I turned on the navigation thrusters right as one of the reactors ran out of fuel. So it crashed butt first into the ice and we started uh, copying the key design features into a more compact, refined version of the vehicle and left the skeleton there on the ice for the time being. A lot of it I stripped down to get materials and components and stuff to build this one, but a lot of it too was the back end of it just basically being demolished. So we're, we're taking the bad and making the good. And now we're going to take a look at the good to explain in a little bit of detail exactly how it works. Now we've got the uh, the wheels up top. We've got a pair of wheels in the front and a pair of wheels in the back. And their sole purpose is to absorb the shock, as we mentioned, of basically coming to the end of the track to make it a little bit less likely that they're going to destroy the end of the track and just keep on barreling through it. So that's kind of an important part of this whole setup is the bumpers on the front and the back and the other wheels, all the other wheels, all eight of them, four here and four there, they just roll. They don't actually provide any propulsion of their own. I tried setting that up because the nice thing about the wheels is that if you can do it properly, you can limit their speed so that they can only go so fast, but I just, they, they didn't want to work. They, the, the little buggers didn't want to work. So we're using thrusters instead of wheels for the propulsion. Seems to be okay as long as we get it dialed in properly. It's crying out for a script to work as well as it possibly could. And I think in my spare time, what little spare time I have, uh, we're gonna be looking at making a script that will help manage the speed of the, the vehicle as it's moving around back and forth along the track using the thrusters and counter thrusters to make sure that it's not getting so fast that it just barrels right through the blocks on the end. So that's going to be kind of a, a little topic that may or may not materialize before this whole project is done. And I've got lots of thrusters on here. Uh, we've got thrusters up top. There's one on the back, of course, and then these guys over here, and there's a corresponding thruster on the back along with the two top thrusters here and the two top thrusters on the back end those are all just for moving it backwards and forwards along the track that's their sole purpose when you're navigating when you're just flying around when you're trying to get the ship onto or off of the track all of the th of the things where you're treating it like a ship and not just something that goes back and forth across the rails uses all the other thrusters so the lower two thrusters on the back and the front i guess that's the the back that's the front We've got thrusters here, lift thrusters, two more over there, and then a total of four on the other side. And then we've got left and right thrusters, just a couple of small guys here, left and right. 
to lift the ship, move it forward and backward, side to side when it's in midair, and all that basic kind of stuff. We've got a pair of gyros, uh, which are a little bit overkill for this ship, which is nice, actually, because when you're trying to line up the ship to get onto one of these rails, having that responsiveness is very, very key. It makes the whole thing a lot easier than if you're basically driving a pregnant whale. Two is good for now when it's carrying a full load of drills and partially full with the cargo container here with ore and things that we've extracted. Two might not be enough, but we can only uh, wait and see until we actually get a chance to start drilling with this guy and see what we get. We've got a pair of reactors. Like I said, a pair of reactors seems to be enough for what we've been doing. Uh, two over there was fine until one of them ran out of fuel and then we saw what happened so we have to keep an eye on that They're connected to the large container via a conveyor so we can just dump uranium ingots in here and they will be uh, fed to the The reactors as the reactors want them. So that's kind of a nice little feature that we've got built in We've also got access to the reactor ports themselves so that we can add uranium manually if we want to do that So that's kind of a thing as well. We can uh, do either or what else have we got? Landing gears, which are handy. These three conveyors at the bottom are what are going to be holding the rows of drills. So, in case it hasn't been made clear yet, which is probably the case, <laughs> attached to each one of these conveyors is going to be a row of drills going off in either direction. How many drills? I don't know. Uh, it just kind of depends on what we can lift and move and do all those things with. Same thing for that guy and that guy. So you're going to have three rows of drills working to try and help clear as much material as possible each time you go forward and then back each you know we want to try and set ourselves up so that we're moving material fairly quickly and taking advantage of this system that we built for ourselves to uh, gather stuff fast and then move on beyond that really I mean it's a very simple kind of ship I would like to have like I say the scripting in place we've got a spot down there if we wanted to have a programming block we don't have any lights on it yet. Uh, we'll probably get some in the not-too-distant future. Oh, the most important components are the sensors. There's a pair on the front, and there's a pair on the back. The ones closest to the center mass of the ship are not actually used right now. They're just kind of there. I wanted to have them there in case I needed more actions available than just toggling thrusters back and forth. These are the ones that pretty much detect uh, when the ship has gone off the rails, so to speak, or is about to go off the rails and toggle the thrusters so that if this guy goes over that way, and you can see, it's designed specifically so that it'll stick out, so that it'll be sensor, 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 and then all of a sudden there's nothing above it, and it says, oh, there's nothing above me. It'll toggle the thrusters, turn off the forward thrusters, turn on the reverse thrusters, and start pushing it back that way. And that's basically the way the whole system works with these sensors to allow that to happen. So if we can tie in the sensor system that allows us to toggle the thrusters to change the direction that we're going with what I'm hoping will be a very simple script <laughs> to monitor the speed of the vehicle and adjust the thrust and the counter thrust to maintain an appropriate speed we will be in business we will be styling like nobody's business and it'll be fantastic and all kinds of fun if if we don't have time to get the scripting done then it'll probably hopefully still work but it might be a little bit dangerous i guess you could say so what's next next it's all well and good to have something that goes back and forth with drills on it to mine something, but what happens if you can't move up and down? Well, nothing. Nothing happens. You just basically go back and forth, look silly, tell everybody you're mining and you don't ever mine a damn thing. We need to be able to move the track up and down, so that's going to be the next step. And I'm not going to go into a ton of detail with what I had in mind, because if I do and it doesn't work, then I look silly. Of course, I look silly all the time anyways, but you get the idea. We're, we're not going to go crazy with it until I have something to show you. But the whole idea is that this system I want, first of all, uh, that I can stow when we're moving the vehicle. Kind of attach it via merge blocks or something like that to the vehicle. Move the vehicle around, not have to worry about things falling apart when we do so. Uh, and make it as easy and, and intuitive as possible to do that. The other thing that I want to do is be able to move up and down with the drill, the whole drill track assembly. I want to be able to move it up and down virtually limitlessly. 
So our ability to move the track up and down will be limited only by the materials that we have available to us and not the extent of the pistons that we have connected that allow the whole thing to move up and down. So that's a little bit of a hint for some of you who are a little bit more familiar with the systems. For the rest of you, you'll probably get a much better idea with the next episode. But I do have a plan in mind. We're going to do our best to put it in place. We're going to have something to show you uh, and a little bit more in terms of details for the next episode. So if you want to be notified when I add that episode, the easiest way to do that is to subscribe to my channel or follow me on social media. Links for social media always in the information box below the video. Feel free to leave your comments and feedback. Thanks for watching, guys, and take care.